Uh, Dr. Del Rio, it normally takes years uh, to come up with a safe and effective vaccine. Uh, we don't even have an HIV one yet, and that's been, what, 30 plus years? So give us the re realistic time frame here. Are we talking about a year and a year and a half? From which point? From the time it started in China or for the time it was first detected here in the United States? Well, uh, I think, as you say, developing a vaccine for any disease is not easy. And what's happening with COVID, it's really at record time. And it's record time because we have uh, science and technology that is allowing that to happen. There are over, over 50 vaccines being developed, of which three of them are already in clinical trials. The most advanced vaccine is a vaccine produced by CanSino uh, Pharmaceuticals in Hong Kong. It's an antivirus 5 a vector vaccine expressing the, the spike protein of COVID. And that is now in phase two trials, which is an efficacy studies, entered efficacy study, studies. The other two studies are in phase one, including the one that we are involved with here at Emory as part of the NIH uh, funded study with, with the vaccine developed by, by Moderna. And the Moderna vaccine is an mRNA vaccine, and that's in phase one, which is safety. So we have done a lot of progress, but still, I think if everything goes well with any of these vaccines, and we may end up having more than one vaccine, we're still talking about maybe a year to a year and a half from now before the vaccine is, is, is available. And even at that point, I think production is going to be an issue because you're going to have to produce millions and millions and millions of doses. So I think even at the end, if you had a vaccine, it's going to take some time to get it to the population and really have an impact because it's going to require a lot of production, a lot of manufacturing that we currently simply don't have. So, Dr. Del Rio, how many people are normally involved in the human trial when you get to that point? How many subjects are involved? And how long do you monitor these subjects for some serious side effects that could come up? Well, the first phase, the phase one, which is safety and immunogenicity, is usually a small number of healthy individuals that get involved, and you're looking for a signal of, of any harm from the vaccine, and you're also looking at whether the vaccine produces an immune response. And typically for that, you need maybe a, a dozen or so participants. Now, once you get to the phase two study, that is the efficacy part. And for the efficacy part, uh, I, I would need to do calculations, but you're talking about uh, several hundred uh, to a thousand individuals or thousands of individuals that need to be enrolled because you really need to see what is the incidence of the population. And depending on the incidence of the population, then you have to see well, can, can we drop that incidence by 50%? If you're going to drop it by 50%, then you need to calculate how many subjects would you need to enroll in the vaccine study to do that. But it's typically you're talking about several hundreds to thousands of individuals. And how long are those individuals monitored for, for possible side effects? Well, typically six months to a year. But again, you know, not only do you monitor for side effects, you also monitor to see if they get protection from the vaccine, right? Because what could happen is, let's say, Let's say for whatever reason public health works and COVID goes away. Uh, by the time we're ready to test the vaccine, if COVID is no longer around, you would never know if the vaccine works or not. You simply would not have the disease around to test it. Um, Dr. Del Rio, so many drug companies are racing uh, to come up with human with to come up with a vaccine. In some cases, they're going straight to human trials and skipping years of animal trials that are the norm in developing vaccines, does that create uh, problems and maybe lapses in safety? Uh, no, I don't think so, because the, the vaccines being developed are recombinant technology and animals don't get COVID. So I think, I think we're fine. I think, again, you know, you're trying to speed this up. You're trying to balance safety with, with really speed. And, you know, we need a vaccine right away. And if you spend too much time doing animal testing, you may not get the answer you need in the time you need. Besides uh, safety of a vaccine, what other uh, factors are involved? What is your biggest concern when you think about coming up uh, with a COVID-19 vaccine? I think the biggest va concern that myself and others have is actually that we still don't know how the immune system works with this virus. And there's some suggestion that maybe having immunity against similar viruses actually produces worse disease. And we see this in diseases like dengue. In dengue, we get something called antibody depending, uh, depending, uh, dependent immunity and, and pathogenicity. And you can see that, that you know, in, in the vaccine may actually precipitate 
um, more severe disease as opposed to limit the disease. So that's something that is being looked at very carefully, is what is the interplay between the immune system and the virus, and how much of the damage produced by the virus is caused by the, by the immune system and not the virus. So the, 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 the tricks the immune system can play is something that we're still very interested in looking at.